Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty good stories about acceptance. First up, Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary reverses stance on Bitcoin, says crypto is here to stay, invests 3% of his portfolio. And this is after years of him talking trash about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in general. So the real question is, what changed his mind? So we'll take a look at that. Also, on top of this, Robinhood expects to pay 26.6 million FINRA fine. And really, it all comes down to is that these fines are just the cost of doing business. And finally, we'll take a look at the Daedalus wallet from IOHK, as they are reporting to have a first ever multi-asset wallet. And this is just more great news for Cardano. So before we get into that first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Today is, uh, I think it's the first, March 1st. Hey, congratulations, we made it. It is, uh, gosh, 9.40 p.m. Houston, Texas time. And that's the reason why, uh, first of all, the backdrop looks a little bit different. And second of all, it's because I didn't do a video yesterday because I drove in from El Paso and I was just too tired to do it. But I'm sure nothing really happened yesterday. I mean, it's just cryptocurrency. Now, like, uh, things change all the time. What are you going to do? Anyhow, so this is our, our Houston place. Just so you uh, get a feel for it. Here we are. Nice uh, on the lake. Feel pretty good. But uh, we're here today. Uh, well, first of all, to see our grandson and second of all, to close on a uh, investment property. So hopefully, uh, you know, the investment property happens, who knows, hopefully we get to close. But anyhow, here's what's going on into the market. So today and yesterday, yesterday was a pretty bad day for a lot of things. Um, I mean, if you look at it, like, like it is a bad day because things dropped off the face of the planet, you know, there's just a, a big dip. And it wasn't like a crash, it was just a dip. And if you're new to the space, just know that, you know, 10%, 15%, 20% a day, that's sometimes normal. And that's just the way it is. Traditional market players don't really uh, get it until they really come into this space. But uh, don't worry, uh, because uh, usually we have a nice little rebound, like what we have today. So we see Bitcoin, uh, it's up 10% in 24 hours, Ethereum 15%, Cardano 2, Binance Coin making some huge gains, 25% in 24 hours. Wow. If you caught that dip, congratulations. Uh, Tether's Tether, nobody really cares. Polkadot, 14%. XRP, watch out, 6%. Whoa. Yeah, big stuff. And Litecoin. So I think everything is pretty much up across the board. I mean, if you're in the red, it's kind of weird. Die, but no one, that's fine. But uh, just so you know, uh, you know, we've got uh, a market cap. Uh, we had almost slipped to like 1.3 something trillion, and uh, which was a pretty big dip from the 1.7. But just remember, this is the thing. When you have these big dips, you have to take advantage. Um, I'm not giving you financial advice. This is just what I did. As soon as I saw that dip yesterday, uh, I was, we were, we'd, we started off pretty early in, in the drive. I, I looked over at my wife. I said, look, today is the day that you have to buy more. And uh, whatever you're doing, dollar cost averaging, I need you to increase it by at least 20% and go from there. Because, I mean, it could go down again, it could go up, but uh, we know where things are going if you look at the four-year cycles. And uh, that's just the way it is. I know people have also told me, like, Rob, you don't understand what's going on. Uh, you have to understand that this is a totally different market and it will keep going up and it'll be massive and, uh, you know, to the moon, baby. Well, just so you know, there's always going to be traders there's always going to be greedy people. There's always going to be manipulation. I mean, we're going to look at uh, uh, the Robin Hood story in a bit. So nothing really changes. I mean, there are some players like a Michael Saylor uh, that just bought up uh, more Bitcoin today, and he will always. But there's I mean, a lot of people who are just here to trade, sell, stock up, manipulate, and do all those things. So when people say this is a totally different market, a little bit, but uh, it's still the same game. Anyhow. Let's jump into today's uh, top story. So first up, this guy always ticked me off uh, because first of all, um, you know, he when he debates people, when he talks about people, he just throws out this huge word salad and doesn't really get, let people really get into all the specific points. Kevin Leary is a smart guy. I'm not gonna take it away from him. He's on Shark Tank. He made a lot of great investments. But uh, when he was talking to Pompliano about Bitcoin, he said like 10 different points and it's like a, you know, a seven minute se uh, segment and Pomp's like, well, I don't know what you wanted me to do here because I mean, I can only answer, you know, one or two of those points. So it just goes to show you also that if you're waiting for the smart money to tell you where to go, uh, you're too late. And uh, here you go, because I'm guaranteed, I, I can't guarantee anything. Okay. But I'm 99% sure Kevin bought 
crypto way earlier and way more than what he's letting on because you know nobody just is like oh 50,000 now I could have got it for 5 or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 I'll get it at 50 sure so anyhow shark tanks can only reverse his stance what does he say and why does he say it? it's a big thing he states this I actually think that digital currencies are here to stay uh this is an interview with CNBC most people that are willing to hold them including institutions over the last 90 days are willing to deal with the volatility I'm fascinated. I'm investing. I'm holding a 3% weighting in it between Ethereum and Bitcoin. The volatility sickens me, but I'm getting used to it. And um, the, the thing about this is that I don't really care um, that Kevin O'Leary is into it. I don't personally care. I know you really, I mean, you might say this is a good news or bad news or whatever else. But the reason why I am excited about Kevin, you know, uh, coming over is because when people hear these public figures coming over to Bitcoin, then they start to feel like, oh, it's not so bad. Oh, it's not a Ponzi scheme like um, Dr. Doom, whatever his name is, Nairobi, Nairobi. I always forget his name. Robini, that's it. And, uh, you know, all these gold bugs talk about. So, well, Kevin O'Leary is into it and he's a pretty successful businessman. You know, I'll just model that and I'll go after it. So that's why I report on these things because it just moves a needle. It's just the game of inches like football, right? So if we can just get there a little bit one step at a time, so much the better. And if you're going to have Kevin O'Leary, you know, tell people something in public and do something in private, I don't care. Just as long as he gets with the game plan and lets people know that, hey, this is a great opportunity once in a lifetime generational type of thing. So everybody come on board, come on the life raft. We'll see what happens. So to finish up, he says, uh, and finally, I'm starting to think about how do I invest in the infrastructure of mining Bitcoin? Just so you know, old transparency, I also invest in the stocks, not financial advice. I like Tesla. Uh, I like Airbnb. I think once people get vaccinated, they're going to start to you know really uh, travel and need things. And I also invest in something called Marathon or Mara. That's the ticker name, Mara. And it is a mining company and it shot up tremendously. And I got to give a sh shout out to my friend, George from El Paso. He's the one that got me into it. And it's like, hey man, you got to get into Mara. And um, this, you know, not paid promote. I've been investing in them for, for, you know, I think four or five months now. And it's been pretty well. So if you're kind of iffy about the crypto game, you can do your own research and look into stocks. And then uh, just to go down, the, the real question is, why did why is he saying this now? And the reason he says is because I change, he states this, I change when facts change. He states, Canadian, Swiss, and many other regulators have done a 180 on Bitcoin. This is a game changer for many investors, including me. I know he's always talked about, I'd like to do ETFs because I feel more comfortable in doing those things. And that's fine. Whatever this guy needs to feel comfortable to get in, you know, a little bit more heavy, sure. Do I think that he's not in in the past? No but that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. <laughs> so next up, uh, Robin Hood expects to pay a fine. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. It's just that, just so you know, that all this manipulation by, by the big companies, uh, by the JP Morgans, by the different banks, they don't care. They don't care because the, the fines are the cost of doing business. And this is what's going on here. So. Uh, Robinhood, the popular stock app, announced on Friday the U.S. regulators were preparing to probe its trading restrictions on shares of GameStop. Uh, in the SEC filing that they just put out, Robinhood also stated it's preparing to pay at least $26 million with FINRA, not over the GameStop restrictions, but over trading outages in March of 2020. So that's interesting. And it's options trading policies around approval and display. So a couple of things to unpack here. First of all, this $26 million isn't because of the GameStop situation. They know it's coming. They're getting ramped up. They are cooperating with the SEC, which is a pretty smart move because uh, if not, they can just crush you. Uh, so yeah, but again, they have a 26 million for outages. Let's see how much they made over the last couple of years, shall we? So in 2017, Robinhood made 21 million. 2018, 69, 2019, 111. And in 2020, they made $682 million revenue. So do you think that 26 million is anything big to them? They don't care. They're like, eh. 26 million, Psh, light my cigars with that. So, you know, that's just the cost of it. They're probably have to pay more for uh, the GameStop, but um, <laughs> they don't care. They don't care because, uh, first of all, don't sue me, anybody, but I believe, no facts, that um, all these guys talk to each other, all these uh, brokerages and um, uh, mutual fund places or, um, 
you know, financial institutions and go, hey, hedge funds, that's what I'm trying to say. Hey, w- what can we do here? We're going to lose a lot of money. Can you help us out? Sure, we'll just do this. I mean, in public, we can skirt around it, but uh, I got you. And uh, that's what I think it is. I could be wrong. I mean, it's just a thought, just a feeling. I'm not saying there's any proof. Again, don't sue me. Uh, but that's what I think is going on here. And also, um, it's not all gloom and doom for the company, uh, which is preparing to go public. Robinhood is valued at $20 billion, adding added $6 million crypto users already in 2021. So $6 million, that's pretty good. A couple of things here. Uh, also, Coinbase is preparing to go public. The IPO, they're uh, estimated, I think, around 20-something billion dollars as, as it's trading on a private market. And uh, I hope the money that they have, they can start to get into uh, hiring more customer service and maybe some more programmers. Someone said it pretty well. They said, if you have more lawyers than programmers and customer support, then you got a problem as far as a platform. And that's exactly what's going on here. So if these guys get dinged for a... Uh, outages. <laughs> Can you only imagine what's going to happen with to Coinbase when uh, when everything goes public and stuff like that? Hopefully they're showing that up. I don't know. Let me just think in the comments section. Move on to our last piece. And last up, uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Just so you know, I'm biased. And uh, all the things that I invest into, I talk a lot about. That's just how it is. And uh, I make no bones about it. I mean, some people will tell you I'm not biased. I think they're yeah, sure. I think they're not, but uh, I am, and uh, I invest in Cardano and Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Chainlink, and all these different things. So when a story like this comes up, probably going to talk about it. So this is what's going on. So there is the Mary Hard Fork it's supposed to happen today, and uh, they state that this is in a Twitter feed. Well, we're happy to report that we have just released our first ever multi-asset debtless wallet. So I was all excited. I downloaded. It. I'm like, ah, shoot, this isn't the one. And the reason why it's not the one. It says uh, they just released the public testnet only just for now. Uh, it offers multi-asset support, enabling developers and SPOs, uh, state providers, state provider operators to test sending and receiving native tokens alongside ADA with a brand new interface. Tomorrow evening, uh, they release a Daedalus flight wallet, time with the Mary Hard Fork. And this is one, before I'd actually report on this. And uh, they said they put out a new wallet. I was like, I don't see this wallet, but there's going on. And of course... <laughs> I just didn't know that, that they have flight wallets. Like they actually do their due diligence and go, hey, test this out, see what's going on, and then uh, let us know uh, what works or what doesn't, which is what a good company should do. And uh, that's what's going on. So things are moving along. They said they were going to do it, and they're doing it. And I'm very happy with that. Uh, on top of the fact that with the Mary Hard Fork, it ushers in the Gogan era with the smart contracts, the developers can start to build on it, non fungible tokens, uh, decentralized finance, the whole shebang on top of. Everybody's been able to build on top of Cardano, just like they were able to build on Ethereum in the ICO craze. So I expect big things from Cardano. Um, I don't know if it's going to 10x, but uh, I got a price range of around five bucks. That's what I think. Uh, again, not financial advice, just how I see it. All right. So uh, look, that's it for today. Uh, I just want to do a quick little video to see, tell you what's going on. And uh, that is it. So if you made it all the end, uh, thanks for stopping by. And if you liked it, why don't you hit the thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing because the things we talk about are time sensitive like the stories we just said uh, right there. And then if you like these types of videos, I'll link two in the left and right. Uh, Let YouTube do its magic, and that is all. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.